Hi guys, good afternoon. Today I'm assembling a video on the Moscow Polytechnic Museum. And it's not too far from the Moscow River, and it's pretty close to the Kremlin. If you look on Google Maps, it's Polytechnicheski Musee. Okay, so I will start by reading the Wikipedia definition. The Polytechnic Museum is one of the oldest science museums in the world, located in Moscow, that emphasizes the progress of Russian and Soviet technology and science, as well as modern inventions and developments. It was founded in 1872, after the first all-Russian technical exhibition on the bicentennial anniversary of the birth of Peter the Great, at the initiative of the Society of Devotees of Natural Science, Anthropology, and Ethnography. The first stage of the museum was designed by Ippolit Minagetti, who Wikipedia says was a Russian architect of Swiss descent who worked for the Romanov family. And there's no picture of him, there's only a painting. And the whole building was completed in 1877. Almost from the beginning, the collection was too big for the space. The north wing was added in 1896, and the south wing in 1907. At the present, the main building of the museum is closed for reconstruction. The opening of the renovated museum in this building is scheduled for 2018. From 2013, and for the whole period of renovation, the museum will work in partnership with venues in Moscow. So just to recap, the museum was officially founded by a society calling themselves the Society of Devotees of Natural Science. And I looked up some of the characters associated with this society, and it mentions the first president, Gregory Afimovich Shirovsky, a professor of geology in Moscow, who actually has an interesting story. Apparently his parents were killed during the War of 1812, and he became an orphan. Also associated with this society that went on to create the Moscow Polytechnic Museum was Grand Duke Konstantin Nikolaevich of Russia. And this guy was actually a member of the royal family. Wikipedia says he was the second son of Tsar Nicholas I of Russia and younger brother of Tsar Alexander II. And this Ippolit Monaghetti is mentioned to have also worked with the Romanov family. Now you know me, I don't necessarily believe the official history, but that's what we have to work with. During the First World War, the museum was used as a hospital for the wounded people. It had a radiological office that was used by all Moscow medical facilities. After 1917, it hosted political rallies and meetings with the participation of Vladimir Lenin and Felix Dzerzhinsky. Here's a picture of the first stage of Polytechnic Museum building, photographed in 1884. One thing I notice is that on the side of this building, there's bricked up windows and there's little holes in the wall, which to me look like like pigeon holes for joists, like floor joists. And actually looking at the side of the building, strangely it doesn't look like brand new construction to me. Also in front of the building are some young trees. They're not old, but if other phases of construction are still taking place, then I wonder why fresh trees are planted. From what I can read, it says the museum features an old collection of cars, bicycles and motorcycles, and that one of the themes are electronics and communication. On the modernization section of the article, it says, start of modernization in April 2010, the president of the Russian Federation, Dmitry Medvedev, instructed the Russian government to develop a concept of a museum of science on the basis of the Polytechnic Museum. Modernization of the museum is a large-scale state innovation project. The modernization program for 2017-2018 envisages the creation of a fundamentally new museum and educational center covering the greatest achievements of science, technology, and society. In 
2011, there was an architectural competition for choosing a developer, and it said finally the concept of a Japanese architect, Junia Ishigami, was chosen as a winner. If you're wondering, I'm trying to read information that specifically pertains to the building, and not necessarily the exhibits of the museum. On the Wikipedia article it says, The basement of the building will be open for the visitors, thus creating additional spatial volume that can play an important social role in the composition of the center of Moscow. And that was part of the proposal from the developer, the architect, that was going to renovate this building. But this is an important detail because it basically presents some information that the basement is not currently being used and that after renovation, the basement will now become available for space for visitors in the museum. In a section on the Wikipedia article, which discusses tender for the architectural concepts of the museum, it mentions that two underground levels are proposed for development. So I'm not sure how to read into that, but even according to this article, there are two underground levels, two basements, of which it seems neither basement level is currently being used. In 2013, the museum was closed from visitors for the sake of accommodating reconstruction. And it says, in 2013, the Polytechnic Museum joined the board of the International Committee for Museums and Collections of Science and Technology of International Council of Museums, ICOM, under the aegis of UNESCO. Okay, and then I went to the official website for the Polytech Museum, which is a Russian language website, but thanks to Google Chrome, you can translate this into English. And so I went to the About the Museum section. And I'll just read the first paragraph. Polytechnic Museum, one of the largest scientific and technical museums in the world, it was created on the basis of the funds of the Polytechnic Exhibition of 1872 on the initiative of the Society of Lovers of Natural Science, Anthropology, and Ethnography. If you scroll down the page, there is a timeline about the history of the museum and the history of the building. So the first section is called Creation of the Museum of Applied Knowledge. So I clicked on that, and it opened a separate window. I'll just read the first paragraph. The Museum of Applied Knowledge in Moscow, Polytechnic Museum, was established by order of Emperor Alexander II on October 21, 1870. The highest order was followed in response to the petition of the Moscow City Duma to organize a general education polytechnic museum dedicated to applied knowledge in Moscow as the center of Russian industry, especially in need of such an institution. The next imperial decree of April 26, 1871, allocated 500,000 rubles from the state treasury to cover the costs of the museum, these legislative acts ended the long-term prehistoric period in the life of the museum when the idea of the scientific community and business circles of Moscow to create a special general education museum in applied natural science and various areas of technology in the city acquired real traits. Okay, so there's another page that opens up here called the Historical Building of the Polytechnic Museum. I'm going to read the whole thing. This is probably the most interesting thing to people interested in mud flood. The main participation in the design and construction of the building was received by the senior architect of the Moscow Palace office, N.A. Shokin. The facade and details in the Russian style were designed by the professor of architecture, I.A. Monaghetti. The construction of the museum was carried out in three stages. In 1874 began the construction of the central building on the project, i.e. Monaghetti. Directly in charge of the construction was in charge of the highest approved committee for the organization, the Museum of Applied Knowledge, and managing it, a member of the committee, and a Shokin. So the English doesn't translate perfectly, I guess. In 1877, the construction of the central part of the building was completed, the collections of the museum were placed in new halls, and the museum continued its work in new premises on Lubyanka Square. The construction of the Polytechnic continued for another 30 years. In 1896, its right wing was erected, and in 1907, the left wing, 
in which the largest audience in Moscow at the time was located. By this time, the Polytechnic Museum had already acquired all Russian fame as a research and educational center, gained prestige abroad by participating in international exhibitions, and became the cultural center of Moscow. This article doesn't say a whole lot other than, in 1907, the left wing of the museum was completed, where a large audience was located, an important public platform in Moscow. Its discovery in 1907 allowed for a wide public demonstration of scientific experiments as well as lectures, debates, and so forth. Anyway, maybe there's more information to be gathered on this. I'm not going to recap everything I've come across, but I did read this one article which has the Moscow mayor, who is Sergei Sobyanin, and he's meeting here in a picture with first deputy prime minister of Russia, Igor Shuvalov. So maybe an important point to make is that this is a project that is a joint one that is between the city and the federal government. And this particular article related to the landscaping of the exterior of the building. So here's another news article that I was reading. It's entitled, Sobyanin visited the construction site of the Polytechnic Museum. So this is the official visit by the mayor of Moscow. There is a particular mention in this article that the front entrance will be lowered to four meters under the ground. And I'll try to get an image of that. Well, I will actually read, and this is translated from the Russian, and the main entrance itself will be lowered to four meters under the ground in the basement tier, where at the moment builders literally transported the building to a new foundation. I don't get that. So there's a brand new basement that's been built underneath. Folks, if you're listening, I'll, I'll just let you figure that one out because I can't. There's also a photo gallery of images, which is contained on this particular news article. Okay, well, I guess I'll comment on some of these pictures which show up on this article. Again, this is this Sobyanin mayor of Moscow visit to the building. So here's an image called Reconstruction of the Polytechnic Museum, and we can see that it's definitely in the basement level. I don't know if this is the basement or the sub basement. We've got some workers here. Okay, the next image is Sergei Sobyanin inspecting the reconstruction of the Polytechnic Museum. I noticed that these guys are not wearing hard hats. I remember from my experience working on construction sites that not wearing a hard hat could actually get you a provincial fine, well, at least in Ontario. And then over here, there's a young lady and a young man working on the brick or concrete. I notice they aren't wearing um, steel-toed boots, and I suspect whether they are actually workers on the site or just somebody important's kid. Forgive my sarcasm, but concrete and brickwork and stonework is actually a real trade, so it's a little bit disrespectful to replace the actual workers with probably inexperienced people who are not tradespeople. I have a lot of opinions. Here's a picture of reconstruction of the Polytechnic Museum, and this is interesting because this looks like the front entrance, and on the left and right side of the hallway there's some interesting arches. This picture is called Reconstruction of the Polytechnic Museum. As can be seen, there is a temporary shroud which is put up around the exterior of the building. Just my humble opinion, but this might actually be a safety measure to prevent material from falling overhead and hitting pedestrians, so they shroud off the whole area. I know that in stucco work during the winter time, a lot of times the exterior of a building will be shrouded off and tarped off so that they can actually bring in propane heaters for the workers to work inside. Here's a picture, well all these pictures seem to have the same caption, Reconstruction of the Polytechnic Museum, but we get some perspective from the main floor going down to the basement. But please notice that on the right hand side of this staircase going down to the basement, 
there are also window frames. Window frames. So even further, I wonder whether these are exterior windows, which have now been brought inside the building from later stages of construction. I mean, I don't know, but that looks like a window to me. Here's a picture which shows construction going on in the basement. And what's interesting to me is the I-beams, which even seem to penetrate the brick columns. I'm guessing the I-beams are not original. Here's another picture which shows a renovation of the basement level. And I'm noticing also that there are entranceways and even window frames which are in the brick walls. So it makes me wonder how many times historically in the past has this building been renovated. Here's Sobyanin walking along a temporary egress or uh, boards. This looks like a temporary staircase. Again, these look like people posing as tradespeople. This picture is interesting because it shows these brick columns, and it looks like they are reinforcing them. I wonder whether eventually they'll just surround these metal supports with concrete. But if you look in the distance, there seem to be stairs, or steps, and even those steps look like they've been inundated in mud. In fact, the entire basement area of this building looks like it's covered in clay, or mud, which I'm not sure if that's normal, whether that's actually the undersurface of the original flooring, the original concrete, or whether this is actually a remnant from a flood, from a mud flood. I haven't decided. And we're back to the beginning again. Okay, I forget if I mentioned it, but I just like this picture where the building is completely shrouded with tarps. And I just wonder whether this is for practical purposes, to cover the exterior, or whether the tarps are there to prevent people from seeing any archaeological evidence on the building, which might indicate that the historical understanding of this building does not fit with the official history. There is a separate video clip which is attached to this news article where it has a newscaster covering the Moscow mayor's official visit to the Polytechnic Museum. And I'd somehow like to include it in my video. If you look in the description below, I will leave a link of this, but I will also try to point out any notable comments that this woman makes, this newscaster. There is actually mention in this news broadcast a transplant of the building onto a new foundation. As to the technical details of how that's done, I can't quite figure it out. I just don't understand it at this point. Okay, so I will just tag this on to the end. I want to say that there is so much more to cover regarding the Polytechnic Museum in Moscow and there are numerous Russian language videos of YouTubers going and visiting this site and taking footage with their cameras of the exterior entrance of this building and they have lots of insightful things to say with regard to mud flood and the cultural layer and it stands to be covered and unfortunately I'm not going to try and cover all of that today but I will leave some links in the description below of some popular videos about the Polytechnic Museum in Moscow. One of my favorite Russian language videos is by a man named Evgeny Makarov, and he's very popular, and he himself has visited this museum and taken some footage of the front entrance. He was kind in a previous video I had made where I translated one of his videos so I don't think he'll mind again when I include some of his video footage here in my video. So please don't hesitate to check out his channel and to check out some of the Russian language links that I've provided below which specifically 
cover the Moscow Polytechnic Museum. Okay, thank you for listening, and thank you very much to everybody who has tuned in lately and left comments. And thank you to the other YouTube channels, particularly Martin's channel, where people are covering all kinds of interesting new subjects. So thank you very much for listening.